Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. No, it is not True Crime Tuesday yet because I will be uploading this on a Monday, at least here in the Philippines. Um, I am uploading this on October 31st because, because here in the Philippines, November 1st and November 2nd are what we call undas. Um, basically, it's All Saints Day and All Souls Day and we take that time to spend with our loved ones who have passed on now um i won't be doing a get ready with me as you can see my makeup is already done and that is because the weather here is so unpredictable and it has been raining for the past few days and i am now filming this now that the rain has stopped i would also like to take this time to ask you guys to help pray for the philippines um we were hit by a super typhoon just a few days prior and a lot of people have lost their homes and even their loved ones as of now i think there are around 80 people who have perished because of this tragedy and yeah um please pray for the philippines anyway today we will be talking about the woman who almost got away with her crimes because of her charms and good looks. Today, we will be talking about the infamous ice cream killer. Estibaliz Carranza, or better known as Esti, was born on September 6, 1978 in Mexico, but moved to Barcelona, Spain with her family at the age of five. There, she grew up and took up economics at the University of Spain. And after finishing her degree, she then moved to Germany and started working there as an au pair or a nanny. Before applying for a job at an ice cream parlor. Now, during this time, she met a guy named Holger Holz in what seems to be a whirlwind romance. In just a couple of weeks after meeting, Holger proposes to Esti and she agrees to marry him. The then 22-year-old Esti was over the moon. Ever since she was young, she had always dreamt of nothing else aside from being a mother and having her own family. Now, growing up, Esti didn't really have the best life as she wasn't treated well by her own father. So the possibility of creating her own family with Holger gave her so much joy and excitement. However, Things did not really go as planned because once they got married, Holger told Esti that he wasn't really ready for kids at that point in his life, even though he was already 37. Now, in 2002, after getting married, the couple moved to Berlin, and this is when everything changed for them, as Holger immediately dropped his act and started showing his true colors. Holger started abusing Esti physically and verbally, and he would also take all of the money that she made in her new waitressing job. Esti felt like she had no other choice but to endure everything for now as she had no money to escape and go back to Barcelona, where her family was. Now, little by little, she was able to start saving up money behind Holger's back in hopes of finally escaping her home situation. However, once Holger found out of Esti's plans of returning to Spain, he then took her papers and passport away, leaving her with almost nothing. Fast forward to 2005, the couple then moved to Vienna where they opened up an ice cream parlor of their own. In Esti's mind, this would be a brand new start for them. Opening their own ice cream parlor was actually Holger's idea telling Esti that they would run this shop together. However, this wasn't true at all because all of the workload seemed to have fallen into Esti's hands. She did everything for their business while Holger would stay at home all day watching television and playing video games. He also spent a lot of her hard-earned money to purchase firearms, something that she wasn't really a fan of. And of course, this behavior of Holger's did not help their relationship at all. 
and things only got worse because Holger started to become even more greedy than he already was, if that was even possible. Now, Essie tried to hold on to this relationship in hopes of still having a family one day. This was all she wanted. However, two years later, she then meets a guy named Manfred Hinterberger, whom she soon started having an affair with. And honestly, who can blame Esty when she was being abused physically, verbally, and mentally by her husband? And Holger always knew how to make Esty feel worthless. Now, after meeting Manfred and having an affair with him for a few months, Esty finally decides to file for a divorce. And miraculously, Holger agrees. However, he refused to move out of their shared apartment. So this was a very awkward and highly stressful environment for Esty. I mean, can you imagine still living with your ex-husband who you despise? But Esty was quite resilient. She was able to put up with this for a few months until April 27th of 2008. When Esty got home from a long day at work only to go home and get into a heated argument with Holger. Now, I am not completely sure what this argument was about, but Holger ended up telling Esty that she would be nothing without him and that she wouldn't survive without having him around. Now, after telling her this, he turned his back and just started playing his video games again. And this, of course, triggered something inside of her. Esty then spots one of Holger's loaded guns Laying around and without hesitation, she fires two shots, shooting him directly on the back of the head and killing him instantly. Not really knowing what to do, Esty then goes to bed, thinking that she would deal with this situation tomorrow after work. The morning after, she got up and went to their ice cream parlor, almost completely sure that once she arrives home, police would already be swarming at the crime scene. She was pretty sure that someone from their apartment building must have heard the gunshots. However, no one did. Once Esty got home, Holger was still in that same exact position as she left him. And this is when she decides to burn his body. Now, she decided to do this inside their apartment. And this did not work at all. However, it did trigger the smoke alarms in the building. Now, I have no idea what she was thinking burning a body inside an apartment building with a ton of smoke alarms in it. However, maybe at this point she was starting to panic because he was going to start decomposing eventually. Now, the fire department was quick to respond. However... Our very charming Esty was able to charm her way out of this situation somehow by telling them that she had just burned her dinner and she was trying to cook fish. And they completely bought it. The following day, Esty decides to finally actually deal with Holger's now decomposing body. She got a chainsaw and began cutting him up placing his body parts in different ice cream tubs, which she then placed inside her home freezer to, I guess, help halt the decomposition process. Now, a few weeks in, people started to take notice of Holger's prolonged absence from society. But Esty just brushed it off and just told everyone that he had moved to India to start a new life. And once again... Everyone believed her. She was very charming, according to reports at least. Now, a few months go by and at this point, Esty was growing quite confident, thinking that she got away with murder. However, she then for some reason had to move out of that apartment. I guess her lease was done. So she decided to take the ice cream tubs out of her home freezer fill them up with concrete, and then move those tubs to the freezer that she had in her ice cream shop's basement. And again, she got away with this. Even though she took a taxi and the 
taxi driver helped her loading these very heavy ice cream tubs at the back of his own car. Two years then went by and by this time, Esty was still in a relationship with Manfred, the guy that she had an affair with when she was still married to Holger. And he had no idea what she did to the guy. Um, all he knew was that he moved to India. But in 2010, their relationship started to fizz out. Manfred suggested for them to start seeing other people while still remaining together. Sort of like an open relationship situation. But of course, Esti did not like this idea at all. All she wanted was a family and something serious, something permanent in her life. Now, because of this very sudden suggestion from Manfred, Esti started to suspect him of having an affair with another woman. And this is when she decided to check his phone and his computer. And this is when she found provocative photos of other women that he had been in contact with via dating websites. On November 21st of the same year, Esti and Manfred got into a heated argument. Again, I am not sure what this was about, but I am assuming that this had something to do with the cheating. And thinking that the fight was over and he had won this argument, Manfred goes to bed with a smug look on his face. And once he was in deep sleep, Esty shoots him dead. And this time, she was well prepared. It was then revealed that weeks prior to this, she had actually taken concrete mixing classes, bought a new chainsaw, and had prepared for cleaning materials and new ice cream tubs. This was clearly premeditated. And just like what she did to Holger, Esti dismembers Manfred, put his body parts in tubs, filled them up with concrete, then brought his remains to her basement freezer at the ice cream parlor. At this point, she was very, very confident. She had gotten away with murder twice. But then, when people started asking around if she had seen Manfred, she really didn't know what to say. So to avoid questions, she reports him missing to the police. And this actually worked. A few weeks go by and Esty starts seeing another guy named Roland, who was actually a friend of Manfred's. But were they really friends? I mean, your friend goes missing and still hasn't been found, and yet you start dating his girlfriend just a few weeks after his disappearance. Um, that just really doesn't sound like friendship to me. But anyway, at this point, Esty was again over the moon she was swept off her feet and again this man oh i forgot to mention holger and manfred were both 15 years older than esty and this guy roland is also 15 years older than esty so she definitely has a type she wasn't treated very well by her own dad so i guess you can say that she does have some daddy issues here so anyway, Esty starts dating this new guy, Roland, and she was very, very happy with this new budding romance that she had almost forgotten about the frozen corpses in her freezer until June 6th of 2011. Esty enters her shop and sees people whispering, looking as if they knew something that she didn't. And immediately, she started to feel the tension, and this made her extremely nervous. I mean, she had two bodies in her basement. She then saw some workmen walking around her store, even in the restricted areas reserved for her staff. And she did not know who these men were, as they were not her workers. So she pulls one of them to the side, asking what the hell was going on. This guy then tells her that a pipe had burst in one of the nearby businesses, and the only way they could fix it is if they go through the ice cream parlor's basement. Yes, 
the basement that contains all of the sweet and charming ice cream parlor owner's dark secrets. Esty, of course, freezes at the thought, no pun intended, but she did fill those tubs up with concrete. And these men had no business looking into her freezer, right? Well, wrong. For some unknown reason and circumstance, one of these men came upon these tubs inside the freezer. And the guy Esty was talking to then says, We found a tub with a leg sticking out of it. It's bizarre, but police are on their way to investigate. In a panic, Esty then tells this guy that she had to go. She then grabs some cash along with her passport and takes a taxi to the airport. She bought a plane ticket to Paris but then changed her mind and told the cab driver to bring her to Italy instead. She stayed in hiding in Italy for four days before the authorities finally found her and arrested her bringing her back to Austria on June 10th, 2010. Esti then gave a full confession, telling the authorities all the gruesome things that she had done to both Holger and Manfred. She was taken into custody, and this is when she found out that she was actually two months pregnant by Roland, who for some reason still decided to stay with her, even after knowing that she had actually murdered two of her previous partners. In early 2012, Esty and Roland got married while she was incarcerated, and not long after this, Esty gave birth to a beautiful and healthy baby boy who was then sent to Barcelona to be taken care of by her parents. I'm not sure why Roland wasn't given custody of this child, but yeah, I couldn't find the reason why. On November 12, 2012, Esty was sentenced to life in prison and five years later in 2017, she was deemed as too dangerous to be staying in a prison with other female inmates. Therefore, she was sent and moved to an all-male prison. It's my first time hearing about such a thing. Um, I don't really know what Esty did for the authorities to make this decision, but... I'm also wondering, why move her to an all-male prison instead of just giving her solitary confinement away from the other female inmates? Anyway, while she was in prison, Esty actually wrote an autobiography, nicknaming herself as the Ice Lady. And all of the proceeds of this book was given to her parents to help with raising her son. So in a way, she was still able to financially provide for her child even though she was serving time. Now, honestly, I don't know about you guys, but I do feel sad for Esty. Because she finally got what she had always dreamed of. She was finally a mom. She was finally married to a guy that loved her very much. She finally had a family. But she wasn't really able to take care of her son and the husband personally, because she was in jail. And I guess this is what you get when you do really bad things. And yeah, I guess that's where I'll end today's video. As usual, I would love to hear your thoughts on this case, and should there be any other case that you would like for me to cover on this channel, please let me know in the comments section below. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys on my next video.